space. 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 We just did this. Space. 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 Hey, this is great. It's more of a question now at the end of things. Welcome back to the panic table. Season one, unaccompanied minors. I have the strict pleasure of being your warden for the evening. My name is Cameron Danger Strit Matter, and we're gonna do what we always do and struggle to figure out which direction around the table we go as we introduce ourselves here on episode four. Hey, I'm um, <laughs> um, hey, I'm Azuma. I'm playing India Baker, 17-year-old scientist. She, her, hers, <laughs> that bitch is always. Hi, I'm Kelly Grago. I'm playing Gracie the Android, full name, Gracie underscore eight underscore final underscore actual underscore copy. Hello. Is actual like your middle name in this situation? Or is the eight the middle name? What's or the copy? What's more dramatic. Actors. Middle name. <laughs> wow. Hello, I am Chris Kinkellen. I am playing Barry Barracuda Benjamin. He, him. What Age. Else? Age 19, space pirate, on a staircase as we speak. Wow, yeah. Yeah, we retconned uh, the, the Marine in this case to be a little bit of a space pirate, and there's still one cast member remaining. Hello, my name is Anwar Saab. I am playing Eddie Elmstead, 16 years old, he, him, and I am a teamster looking into an abyss of some kind. Previously on Unaccompanied Minors, so much happened in the last two episodes. First and foremost, Kelly has yet to use her gold star that she earned from the cast in the decompression session of episode two, so we're still dangling waiting for that. That just means she gets to start with one choice that has advantage because we made it up, because we can do that, because this is our show, so fight me. <laughs> and uh, Chris, you were given the gold star <laughs> in last session's decompression session. Wow, I'm excited because both of you are together and you might need it. Whoa, okay, I guess for whatever reason, all of these youths, space youths, the worst kind of youths, have been relegated to this distant, heart-shaped asteroid that's silly with minerals and run by an oppressive mining corporation that seems to be going belly up called Blastex Wilson, a gelato heavy materials company. And whether it was because they chose an undergraduate program and they were banished by their best friend, or if they were busted for trying to sneak into college and hacking around the systems and on sort of a work study that's definitely not a prison turn, or if this was just the last place they could go because as an android without a home, you just kind of have to work wherever you can get it because your warranty is running out. In this universe, though androids look and feel like people, they're only allowed to live for seven years unless the company renews your warranty so you can work for them some more. So that's a fun, Abuse of power. And then over here, a space pirate blown away on his first gig. It seems like he got picked up and is now living a much more humble life as the only human miner that we've met down in the otherwise perilous mines in which only androids would ever choose to go because loss of limb is a little different. Anyway, we've all come here for one reason or another, and those reasons themselves started to go belly up. Uh, the company was maybe going to shut down and you don't have a great place to go for your warranty. You don't want to be here. You, to impress your ideal mentor, the mysterious Dr. Priyanka Kapoor, chief science officer who we got to meet in the last episode. And what better way to do that than finding the mother load right here on the colony. And lastly, I mean, there was nothing else to do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here. Look cool, feel cool. Wow, we we stole the security officer's uh, escort craft. Uh, Borrowed. Uh, yes, uh, hijacked that. Had, I wouldn't call it a romantic moment, but you know, just one of those. Endearing. A moment in time. Yeah, <laughs> like if Journey was to accompany it as you two took off the launch pad as Chance screaming ran in full body armor out going, that's my ship. Uh, don't stop, it would be so great. So that happened, uh, we repelled, it was kind of soothing, but then we fought a lot. We found out that previously, the colony is not the first inhabitant of this asteroid's mining concern. In fact, uh, one of the more shadowy organizations that's just in the margins of our universe here, Chiboba Pharmaceutical, had bioengineered some creatures to also try and do some mining, but then when that didn't pay off, they just up and left and Blast X Wilson took up the bill. Fortunately, they are nocturnal. Uh, unfortunately, 
the eclipse of the two twin suns that orbit each other at the center of our system has just occurred, and so all the little rock gnats, things that are about the size of hamsters, but are the shape of wasps, all in the inside of this canyon that we've started to venture down into in order to access the mines. You would normally take the elevator, but you blew up the only building with all of the easy access down. That's not true. You two flew a ship all the way out to the only other access elevator for the mine shaft, which is what you are accessing presently. Even more interesting, we discovered that when you blew up the building, you also banished Dr. Amina Khan, the colony's geologist, to the depths whoa, whoa, and assumed whoa. that we, she had been killed. We did not banish her. Banish is a strong phrase. He ditched us yeah. and karma got back at her. It wasn't looking good for Dr. Khan. But then it looked a little less not good when you found her bloody footprints yeah. uh, leading into the mine. You making sharp notice that these bugs, which like don't seem great in the first place, despite the insistence of Bruce, the somewhat friendly, if not somewhat difficult to talk to heavy machinery expert over the comms channel had said, we're not a threat as long as they're not in like big groups. You took to setting up a large lit area in the mouth of the mine. You found some supplies, you have a great sort of plan in place for getting back out of the mine by fueling um, some escape pod situations that are down there. And that's where we had you. When both of you looked up to notice an eerie glow at the end of that tunnel that led deeper into the mines, and who was standing there but the good doctor herself looking deep into a crevasse. Meanwhile, our two renegades eh. landed clear on the other side of the solar fields, touched down with only a minor scratch on the spaceship. Captain Carol Thompson had pointed out that by her calculations, there's about eight hours currently of life support power left on the colony because fuel is something that runs real scarce here in the mines. So that is weighing on everybody as we attempt to right the colony to its previous state minus its largest, most important building, which is smashed to pieces at the bottom of the gorge. <laughs> you two, instead of trying to rappel down another elevator shaft, probably after the trauma we observed from these two trying to climb in an elevator shaft, asked if there were stairs and there were, <laughs> which was great. <laughs> Walking down an ominously tight, concrete edifice that just spirals down deep, deep into the earth when you stumbled across some rubble and some creature excrement. And in order to reassure Gracie 8 that everything was fine and that it wasn't a big deal, you s decided to be Mr. Cool Guy and using one of the several large weapons you stole from the stolen, Bar borrowed spacecraft, you fired that shotgun off into the hole, which immediately attracted the attention of something that's probably been making the holes in the first place. And that's where we left off on episode three. Welcome to episode four of Unaccompanied Miners. How y'all feeling? Stressed? Yeah. Mothership fun fact, you've survived to episode four. That means all of you now have a high score of three. That's pretty cool. Put that down there. Gold stars, gold stars, and everyone is very stressed. The situation, here's a fun footnote as well, just as we ease ourselves into the tub of this episode, as we plunge into the caverns of episode four with just our flashlights and our love, uh, we know that if your stress hits 20 and you're still chugging along, somehow not having died, you begin to, every piece of stress you take over 20 starts to take a point away from the skill that you checked and failed ah. in. So that is something just to keep in mind because even in Mothership, when you're winning, you're losing. Right. That's just fun for us for some reason. Fun. <laughs> it's a sickness. It's, it's a sickness. <laughs> Our story begins here on episode four in the primary mining site 
of Lover's Rock, deep, deep below the surface. Right up here, you're already almost a thousand feet deep uh, into the asteroid, and it just goes deeper from there. And though there is only the thinnest, most vague of atmosphere on Lover's Rock down here, the two of you, India and Eddie, can feel the pressure starting to build as you walk. You have ventured through the loading dock area, crept in the wreckage of Heartbreaker Station, and found the entrance cavern where you are now standing right about there. That is what is happening. And following the eerie glow at the mouth of that cavern on this side, you have come across a badly mangled figure, but an innovative one. It's Dr. Amina Khan, and as she turns, it hasn't been, both of you had to make a fear save because her leg, what's up? They both critically failed. We did. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, they both critically failed fear saves, which we said we would address. You already gained some, some stress for that. As Amina turns and revealed, one, the satisfying proof that she is, for the moment, alive, that she found some sort of plasti dip or flex seal and some duct tape and managed to just put her leg and arm back together, but both of them are at bad angles. She's standing nevertheless, and as she turns, her equally duct taped face underneath is just bludgeoned, her, her eye is hanging at a wrong angle out of one side, but that wasn't what was scary, it was the look of conviction and excitement in her other eye as she said, isn't it beautiful? turning to both of you, or at least she mouthed, you're holding some extra comms and she's not on comms, and we're gonna stick to that. This is a show about walkie-talkie shenanigans. Both of you failed right here at the beginning of the episode. I think it's time to get out our gorgeous 60-sided, 20-sided D from Flying Horse Duck and make a panic check. Who would like to be our first victim of the day? <laughs> Go ahead and pass that to Eddie. Roll on the panic table, please. Once per session, I can roll with it then. Once per session, that's this session, baby. Son of a potato. Son of a potato. Oh, that's right, you're doing it twice, huh? Ah! ah! What is that? 15. What is your stress? 16. 16. Neither of these are great. One, I'm gonna let you pick as part of your Teamster advantage. Teamsters get to roll with advantage once per session on their panic checks. So do you want to have immediate problems or long-term problems? That's your freebie for the day. I will take immediate problems. Immediate problems it will be. Let's have you roll on the panic table. What are we looking Nine. at? Nine. All right. Bust a rhyme. <laughs> it's a weird feeling because not that you are even remotely responsible for pressing the button on the sensor that wasn't calibrated or ready and was clearly stated and that you were somewhat in charge of keeping these kids away from pressing. I'm also a kid. Like, what do you want me to do? You know? But this feeling wells up in you of first, like, initial excitement. Oh, if Amina's here, so far nobody's died. Yeah. That's pretty great. You got some banged up androids here and there. Do what you will with that. Yeah. But then that reassurance has a counterweight within you and something just kind of sinks as you feel deflated. This is a condition to stack onto your other condition great. of, what are we working with here? The um, loss of confidence. Loss of confidence and deflated hand in hand. Great. Anytime somebody near you gains stress, you gain stress. Great. <laughs> All right. Anwar. That's not my name. That's not my name. Eddie. Eddie can't get to the phone right now to address this panic check. That's exactly right, because in just a minute, I'm gonna explain what happened with your panic check, but you lock eyes with the bizarre expression on, you lock eye, the other one is not pointed at you, it is wrong, with Amina as the euphoric look on the side of her face that isn't just utterly trashed. Uh, I don't know how we're gonna get it in her thing, but here is a comms radio. She takes that from you, and you find yourself transported by the expression on the half of her face that you can make out. And suddenly, you are sitting in the shuttle bay waiting area on the promised land. This is from just a week ago. 
as a memory fills your mind with that expression. And sitting there, you are crunched into yet another all too familiar vid call booth. Uh, horrible graffiti, awful things scrawled on the walls. Everything is sticky for no good reason as you wait in Promised Land Station, formerly a colony ship that some uh, religious believers had taken out to the edge of the galaxy to start anew. We don't know what happened to them, but we do know now that it is probably the only worthwhile truck stop out here in the Samadhi system. And you recognize the exact same look of conviction and bliss on your parents' faces, Patrick and Molly, too. The androids that were supplied to replace your parents after the great disappearance of so many people, uh, and that were supplied to so many people, as they checked in on you on you know, the tail end of your journey. Kind of the last time you'd have like really clean comms between you and them, and your mother is sitting there. They're both sitting very rigidly, and their face is not an erectus of, of, of glee, but uh, they're just extra weird, and they're already androids. So sitting there, they're like, honey, um, so just going one more time, did you pack enough food? I know it might get cold, so we need blankets. Did you pack it? Could you just check everything one more time? Got blankets, I got toothpaste, Patrick, I got wait, space he's like, honey, socks. We, did, we checked it three times. Just let the boy have his adventure. How are you feeling, son? Okay. We love you. We miss you. I miss you guys, too. Yeah, we, we uh, I know we had talked earlier about coming out to visit you, um, but that's just something that we're, well, we're, and Molly chimes and says, we're going to put a pin in that. Yeah. Just for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, let's put a pin in yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like a plan. And, and they seem distracted as, uh. You guys all right? Son. Uh, you see Patrick sort of shifts Patrick to. Your mother and I have been talking. Okay. About the amount of time that you've chosen to spend apart from us. Exactly. We are so proud of you. And he takes Molly's hand and she's smiling. And all of your accomplishments. Um, you know, living under warranty has been really hard for us. You've given us purpose in a way that well, we've, we're just so thankful for, and we've loved being your parents. And Molly starts to speak, whoa, and he holds whoa, up his hand and what goes, What do you mean, uh, being? You guys are my parents. We love you so much, honey, says Molly, and she goes, Patrick says, hey, please, just let me finish. I wanted to make sure we had the time to talk to you uh, and let you know that five to 10 years is a long time, and we're tired of working. Working over here, even in New New Florida, the company hasn't been the kindest to us, as you know. But we've been making do, and your mother and I are going to explore other options than renewing our warranties. What other options besides renewing your warranty? There's one other option besides renewing your warranty. Don't be scared, honey, uh, says Molly. Uh, the, the, it's not... So binary. We're not sure what happens to androids after their consciousness. I can is tell off. you what happens after their warranty. Well, yes, expires. it is a death like state, but we're it, it it's not a death like state. It is death. Sweetie, we are so proud of you and we are so but tired. And I just don't know if we'll be able to make it through another decade of this. It's just um you are everything to us, and we wanted to let you know this is not because of anything you've done. Do not make this, I'll figure this out. I will get back there, we will figure it out. We, we, we'll figure something out. Do the decision's not... made, son, he says, and- What do you mean the decision's made? You said you were considering options. We already put in our contract terminations, and in about a year, uh, you know, we'll- Why would we'll... you do that? We, and he takes her hand and goes, are excited. Um, about death? We don't view it that way. I know it's been weird communicating these differences from synthetic to organic and- There's not that many differences between us. You guys have like some white liquid thing that serves as blood. I have blood, that's it. Yeah, it's weird that they didn't make it red because just- White like, liquid, yeah, you know, it's kind of gross. More human yeah. Than human, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Honestly, if that's my one note, I just think it's important to find something that you can believe in and pursue that. And we don't think this is the end for us. And so we are so excited to start what we think is the best version of the next part of our story. And your mother and I believe we might see you on the other end of that, but we wanted to let you know none of this is your fault because nothing is wrong. So fault isn't even in question. And it's so important that we told you that before you start your big adventure. Molly is full crying. You couldn't tell me this a week ago when we were at home together. Uh... 
I can't. And then Molly walks out of the room and he goes, I'm gonna go take care of your mother. No, what the? Please call us the second you get to the colony. Um, just find something. We, we've transferred everything to your account. No, 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 take all of that back. Well, we've kept a little bit just for us to get through the year. Um, take that money and extend your warranty. Son, this isn't goodbye. I just thought it would be good to tell you at least a year in advance because you need that sort of lead in time and we'll have plenty of conversations. We'll, it'll be great. Uh, we've been saving up so maybe we could even uh, get you home for the holiday. Wouldn't that be nice? That would be great, yeah. but take your money, extend the warranty for as much as that money will take you. As you're talking, the timer clicks out on the end of like the payphone duration and the Blastex Wilson logo clicks onto the screen again as you lean back into the arsty foam chair of this vid call booth. I'm stuck in the chair. And your butt's stuck to the chair. In an instant, you're back in the cavern and you haven't seen fervor like that, belief like that until now in uh, Amina's face. And as you experience this, you feel consciousness sliding from your body and unresponsive, you flop to the ground, catatonic as the result of your panic check. Sick. Go ahead and roll 2d10, please. Zero. And a seven, so seven. You are catatonic for like the next seven minutes and just unresponsive. So, womp, you just see Eddie flump over when he sees her. Before we carry on, Eddie, there's an upside to this, this whole thing. Roll one more D10. I'm not being mean. You lose five. Five? You lose five stress. Sick. Yeah, that's big. <laughs> that's really, that's really hefty. big. That's hefty. What does that put you down to now? 11. Acceptable. Wow, you had a lot of stress. A lot happens to Eddie in about two seconds. And then suddenly <laughs> you <laughs> look as the only person who kind of really knew what they were doing down here yeah. oh, with you okay. flumps over onto the ground, just eyes still open, just unmoving. Ed. Oh, for Pete's sake, says Amina. Even I, I've been crushed by several rocks, and I know his name is Eddie. Please. Oh, sorry. Just I'm sorry. It's it's like something with him. I don't know. It's a weird thing. Eddie, e Eddie, um, Eddie. Given the gravity of the situation, says Doctor Khan. I'm just going to. And she extracts the med kit that he's carried down there. She clacks the comms chips in, and she goes. Uh, I, I found a couple of stim packs. That's how I'm moving my horribly mangled arm. Yeah, here. Isn't looks... this impressive? The glue just holds everything together, and Doctor Khan. I just want to say. I'm sorry. She's listening as she like about several everything. Into her. Um, this was not meant to be the way, and I know you gave me the responsibility, and I I let you down, and um, I'm gonna make it up to you. I am going to to make sure that you get out of here. Her mangled hand just presses against <laughs> your visor, leaving just smeary pink blood dust on the front of your faceplate. Thank you. As she goes. Shh. I was so mad at you. I woke up at the bottom of a chamber and my life's work had fallen on top of me and I largely blame you because you are the responsible adult in the group of children and it seems like you are doing some sort of cookie ruse to make my life bad because I believe you hated me. But then I noticed something and she directs your attention to the edge of this and she says, you see this, this cracked rock right here? And she points down. I'm making great gestures, but imagine more of like a <laughs> flumpy. Yeah. Uh, and looking down, she's thrown a uh, fluorescent flare down. And she goes, this crack underneath the substation to sign that, like next to a letter was not here before. I have no better words for this. Behold. And as you lean over the crack, the flare is not the only thing that's uh, missing. It goes straight down and as far as you can see on all the edges of these cracks are the most spectacular deposits of minerals and ore and gemstones all the way down. Just a perfect vein that somehow in the dividing and, and planning of the mine they had just missed that goes deeper than you can see. It is hypnotic and beautiful. Those plasma opals that you see on the wall, uh, iridescence, the likes of which you had not seen 10 times that. It is so fascinating that you must make a composure save for me, please. This is a special one. A success. 
it's soothing as the light plays over you. And on a successful composure save, you don't feel your mind slip, though something strange tugs at the threads of your consciousness looking into this. These swirling colors is not the same as looking into some sort of exotic lava lamp. Uh, you feel a deeper tug on a level of your consciousness you've never really accessed before, just something other as the most calming presence you've felt in weeks warms and fills your interior. Roll a d10. Nine. Nine stress wicks away from you as you look at this otherworldly wow. light. Look at all that stress. Whoa. You see that Amina is looking into it and suddenly her situation checks out. You've never seen anything like this. And with her good hand, she grabs your arm and she goes, Baker, I believe we found the Mother Lord. You did this. <laughs> Dr. Khan, this... The company will pay for everything. We didn't know that... Look how far it goes. What's down there? What, what remains? This is just the surface of this. They'll rebuild Heartbreaker Station. We'll call it Heartbreaker Station 2 or something. I don't know. I'm not good with marketing. Um, I am bleeding quite a bit. Yeah, do, do, I was going to say, Dr. This is incredible. I have to say, I've literally never seen anything like this. And I, I feel different. If you could just... But, for, and, no, no, no. Yeah, you, you no, hold no, her wait. and she, she sits down. Yes, you can lower down together just next to her. Yeah. Eddie. I, think, I think that this is great. But we have eight hours. Eight hours. With the oxygen we have right now. And we need to just get to the other side. And we'll come back here. Yes. We need to go. We just need to go. So, yeah, you just take over. I'm, I'm going to get us out of here. I'm going to rest here. Yeah, yeah. You you rest here. And I'm going to work on getting us out of here. Because this is incredible. It's You've saved. <laughs> we're going to be rich. I've I've saved the colony. You're Who so knows right. Oh this my could God. Be, like, we've always wondered what is down here because yes, the, why are these minerals forming? You've unlocked. No, no. I need Dr. Kapoor to see this. So you just sit down, and we are gonna get us out of it. Sit, sit down. She sit rests. Down. And yeah, she thank says, you. Okay. Thank you. I, if you can, the link. The, you have two. You have two options. I think the, if it's still intact, I, I didn't check. In Heartbreaker Station, the readout, if you could salvage that from the sensor. If not, there is a sister unit somewhere down here. I, I can't... If you can follow the conduits, the, the prototype. Yes. The sensor, if they're intact, the readouts for this, worth more than every person on this colony, I assure you. If you could just look at for that, the geology, the science, it's so important. Please be on the lookout for the readout. Just, there's going to be a system terminal. Okay. I really must rest. And she sort of lays back and your zoology has gone this yeah. <laughs> from earlier. So yeah, a person with a concussion should probably sleep. That's yeah. a great idea. No. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so she just lays back. The stim pack is going in her arm. So you're, we're not like super worried about her. She's uh, suits have like little ports for emergencies where you can just uh, jam stuff in it. Now you are standing alone at the entrance of the mouth of this mine. And as uh, dawns on you that you're completely by yourself at the edge of the light you see scurrying legs and Eddie unmoving at your feet what do you think your first move's gonna be here I want to get the doctor back to the the thing the car to send her up Amina yeah right now everyone thinks Amina's dead yeah so I want to send her back up in the car like in that shoot thing okay yeah, I, I want her to... There, There's a hand truck nearby. The same thing that we... Yeah. Like, just all sorts of stuff for pushing wheelbarrows and yeah. things. So I wanna, Bef I wanna... Before you do that, I had a theory last night that I want to share with you right now. I'm worried that something got to Amina and laid an egg inside her. <laughs> yeah. And is going to hatch and kill her in the process. I'm worried that she needs to be quarantined. I woke up at 3 a.m. and had this epiphany. Yeah. I have no evidence. Great. I'm gonna send Dr. Khan <laughs> back up in the hatch. <laughs> and This is Kelly to Azuma. And right this now. is Azuma to Kelly. I'm gonna send <laughs> Dr. Khan 
back up in the hat. <laughs> I don't want to steal her access you card. You want to borrow? Her I want to borrow card. her access card. Done. You've got because Dr. I Khan's I don't card. know what kind of access we'll need down here because we still need to find Elmo. We still need to find these readings. I'll okay. have to go back into the station. Yeah, we needed her card to go. Yeah. You are on comms in case you wanted yeah. to ask yeah, yeah. for help. Is that you can either do this your own or you can yeah. call someone to come down. Yeah, here. yeah. So channel one. Yeah, channel. Hey, um, somebody. Hello. This is command. Go. Um, hey, command. I found Dr. Khan. She's alive. She's not. As you're talking, doing great. Yeah. It's hard for you to communicate, and you think it's static down yeah. here for a moment. Hey, wait. Hey, hello. And then you realize it's because everybody in command is cheering. Oh. Okay. He hello. It's just a yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. No. Wait, guys. In, in the background, you still hear the, the yeah. crystal clear comms as yeah. Darius runs in. What? What is the matter? What? Yeah. Uh, uh, hey. Darius, hey. What is um, matter? So, uh, D Darius. Hey. Um. Baker. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Um. So Amina is alive. She is alive. You hear a thwomp. Okay. Ugh. Again, cut off immediately. Uh, and then there's a scuffle thwomp as Aisha picks back up the, the, the microphone. She goes, he's on his way. Oh, great. The, yeah. Um, I, I, I will, I, I'm What's your location? To, yeah, I am uh, right in front of uh, substation two. Um, all right, don't move her at all. We'll be right there. Are you sure? I. Uh, I've just I've just seen a lot of the hollow vids and they're always like never move the patient you know the crime yeah, ones yeah. where yeah, yeah. like that I love the one where they're like loading crates and then the the space cops are okay. like don't yeah I'm sorry I'm just so excited uh, yeah right okay uh, um all right all right Darius is coming um just sit tight okay wait quick quick question yeah what's yeah, up quick so um uh, is um uh, is the do doctor the captain around is she in the command I'm right here oh hi. Um, so I have her badge. Um, Noted. Yes, so I, do you want to send it back up with her, or... Why would I want... I will say I'm that, the captain. Yes, right. No, but I'm saying that I see something down here that looks really insane, incredible. Hey, kid. Amazing, yes. And uh, I, I want you to know that what you've done right now is a really great thing. Colin. You blew up the single uh, well, source I, of our livelihood, and so I that's something we're going to discuss. Anything. This um, is great it was work. An Android that blew Please, it up, but, okay. in the name okay. of Mother Void herself, yes. don't touch anything, and we'll be right down. We're gonna let the grown-ups handle this from here. And and India, great work. Sit tight. We're coming. And so she just shuts off the channel after that. Um. So. You, you feel that reassurance as you look of just like the two bodies sprawled in yeah. front of you and a hand truck. And we're going to come back to you in just a second. There's an egg in her. Just telling you. <laughs> <laughs> Simultaneously, all of us on the other side of the colony, past the solar fields and about halfway down into the asteroid as you just walked for like 20 to 40 minutes. You thought it'd be a great idea to fire a round of a combat shotgun just into this wet mucusy hole to demonstrate that nothing would be there. You know the idea with the cat in a box. Like Schrodinger's cat? Yes. Yeah. It's like that. We we're either in danger or not in danger. Mm -hmm. And I made one of those things. I don't know Schrodinger. if Schrodinger was like, it's it's both, so I should shoot the shoot box. The box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's very decisive. <laughs> I gave us an answer. The updated theory, shoot the box. And when we left you, as you had fired a shot, you looked up as something began to burrow fast and aggressively and in a very large radius directly in front of you in the spiral staircase going down. We this is happening this second. Both of you make a fear save. Do we see it or we just can... It's happening and, and I'm describing quite a bit, but this is all in the matter of seconds. So it was like, blam! <laughs> Starts to happen simultaneously. Do I roll with advantage? Is this where you like to use your little gold star? No, because of Jerry, my emotional support chameleon. Jerry... Whose job? It, like that's what he was designed that's for. That's what right? he was designed for. Yeah. So just on your neck. He's like. That's his <laughs> skill. Yeah yeah. 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 Go great, ahead. Great. Great. Take it. I. I. I need it. Great. Get some stress. When a uh, creature in mothership. Uh, when you fail uh, a fear save, it just means it surprised you. So it busts through the rock, and the thing that explodes through this is a thick, a torso thick, uh, mucusy looking, dark purple, veiny thing, and its mouth opens like a flower uh, in front of you as uh, chitinous plating covered in spikes and nasty little cilia sprawl out into the. 
darkness before you because it's just you, your flashlights, and this thing. Uh, little luminescent streaks of mucus run down its back, and it doesn't make any noise because you're in a vacuum, but and as it opens, rotating teeth units on the inside that look like some sort of, like, drill thing. Uh, as this thing busts forward, drawn, apparently, by the commotion from what you've just caused there, and it snaps forward into the uh, chamber just right there. Um, because we failed our fear saves, that compounds, and now we're going to both make body saves. It got the drop on you. Whoa. Whoa. Critical successes. That's triple zero. Oh. <gasps> Everything is amounting to this. Five is good. Five is good, a triple zero is about as exquisite as you can get. Uh, you tell me what colossal success looks like right here in this moment okay. as this thing busts forward and just snaps. I feel, because I'm in the front, I do a very cool matrixy bend down. So the worm comes flying over you as it like moves towards Gracie behind you and you're just watching the, the scaly plating of this thing and it's long as it snaps towards you. And so it moves right past you as you Neo under this thing in this cramped stairwell. And now it's coming toward me. Yeah. And I I fall backwards as I'm about to make like you the same move, <laughs> but it didn't work. Like I saw Barry do it and I fall backwards and I sort of like kick off of the worm yeah. and flip and I land like a cat on there's a pole in the center of the staircase. Sure. I'm gripping the pole right now and the worm like skids past me. It it, it, it just <laughs> into the stairs and then just starts to thrash. If you are underneath it, you're like up next to it. If you stay put, it's going to just start thrashing and undulating and it seems extremely dangerous. Yes. So how, how close are we? Are we you're, like, you're like almost on it. Okay. Like over the top of it and you're under it. Both of you are inches from this thing. The underneath could be soft. And I have a shotgun. Okay. Um, I have zoology. Do you, when, by looking at it, would I need to use? You that? absolutely know what this is. No role necessary. Great. So the reactive vibration. Yeah. It's okay. a very Dune situation. Okay. Yeah. So in okay in Dune they. <laughs> Which is really... canon in this universe. Dune. Frank Herbert absolutely published this before the whole thing. Barry in Dune. <laughs> which I, which I have read. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite book. They use something, a distraction unit called a thumper, and it draws the worm near it. So, uh, we can use we can use the grenade. To not the grenade. I let's can not use the I grenade. I can shoot the shotgun again against the wall. Okay, I'm just gonna scream, bro. Um, so I'm gonna start yelling and just like generally making a lot of sound with my body. Jerry will help, and you shoot, shoot it. something? Shoot it? No, it? I'm right underneath. The shotgun could be like touching its belly as I shoot. It's absolutely, you're, it's right there. Okay, you want to jam it in there, and then I'll, That's what she said. I'll, I'll distract it so that it, it doesn't look at you, it looks at me. And then maybe you have more time to act, okay? Yes. Okay. Scales. Oh, just sort of open up as these sound. like thick wavy cilia stick out as it's thrashing and it starts to go like this and you effing shoot this thing. Combat check, please. Remember, you both Can have I, your gold stars, by the way. I want to advantage here. Yeah. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, you're at point blank range with this, this combat shotgun. So you're using your gold star here? Yes. You had your military training. That's absurd. <laughs> A regular fail though, right? Mm -hmm. What are we what are we dealing with in this particular circumstance? Uh, I have 53 and I got a 56. Okay, so the great news, you aim, you pull the trigger and boom, you fire. Go ahead and because this is Chance's uh, custom shotgun, 3d10 damage at point blank range. This whole time, Gracie is like, blah, 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 over here. That's my, my, so my that's my tactic. Six total. Oh, you only do six damage. Yeah. Ah! So this thing has uh, an armor of five. The, the great news, you roll a six, it punches right through the underbelly scales of this as blam! 
the bad news is that it also uh, ricochets back, like damaging the, the this close. It, you've just damaged the gun itself. However, the thing starts to, to wriggle in agony as you've heard it already. With, this is a thing that is not used to being hurt. Uh, so that's happening as its head out of the stairs underneath you, and it starts to turn its attention towards you. You are successful. It is looking at you. Is there anything else you wanted to do in your turn? You get to do two things because stomping is easy. Looking at just, me. And so you just see these weird rotating sort of like Indo bony shafts. Of, it doesn't have eyes. Okay. And there, there's nothing. There's nothing like that I can use as cover. Like pick up. There's no the hole. Wreckage. I'm okay. I love it. the hole. Great. Yeah. I want to get into the sloop. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you just wham 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 dive, uh, which is great because on its turn the worm rears back. Right where oh. you just are. If you do nothing, this thing is going to just sort of start burrowing up and through. Again, just causing general damage. It's more of a body save situation because it's just wigging out. Like, this is not a thing that's hunting you. You are just in its way. My next turn, I'm going to take aim with the flare gun in case in case it comes in the hole. And maybe I'll like shoot, try shooting it in the mouth. I don't know. So you made a big bangy sound. Yeah. It is now going towards that. You're yeah. next to it in a hole. It's distracted, is what okay. I'm saying. Right, yeah, right, it's, right, you, right. you two are not its targets out. this second. It is big and it is thrashing. So just like being near it, you're probably going to be in a little bit of danger if you don't do anything. Um, but you could also just shoot it a lot. I'm, I had, as much as I would love to, I'm gonna be smart for once. Really? Now, <laughs> let's try. Now that this shotgun is basically useless, I'm going to throw it up the stairs to make a dinging, like a loud dinging sound. Cast the hole. Yes, past the hole, hey, what, what? up, past the hole, away from you. And then I'll sneak past. And yeah, I, we need to down. go down the Great. stairs as fast as possible. I love possible, that idea. Playing it safe. Yep. I, that was really nice. Yes, sir, Good I thinking. Know. Go, now. Yeah. Throw shotgun. You see its trajectory like start to go like this as it moves up, uh, following the clanging of that shotgun up ahead of you. And you just watch this thing freight train by. And then I just take off. You feel it pass and the rumbling hasn't stopped. Is it turning around? I don't want to wait and find out. We need to, as fast as we can, okay. head down these stairs. Okay, let's go. Let's go now. All right. Incredible. Uh, this is just a speed check situation as you exit combat because there's, this is one rock worm. Oh. It, oh God. Tis the season, hey. nocturnal creatures. This was a speed check? Yeah. You gain stress as you fall down, and go ahead and just roll a d10 as you flomp down the stairs, slipping quite in character over goo and stuff. You're fine. <laughs> Seven. Seven damage. Okay, so no. what's great is that you just start running down the stairs, circle after circle, and the thing is shaking. As you keep moving down the spiral staircase, the shaking grows less bad. Uh, you realize you're alone as you reach the base of these stairs, running harder than you've ever run in a spacesuit before. And uh, the shaking starts to pick up again, rumbling as clang, bang, flap, boom, kip, kip, <laughs> And you, in an absolutely wrecked hazard suit, stand up at the base of the stairs. Your armor protected you from most of that. You take two damage and you stand up uh, injured. Um, uh, so, we made it. Yeah. So we fought a whole worm and you tripped down the stairs. It's my character flaw. <laughs> oh God, um, okay, we need to uh, just get out of this area because okay. I don't think there's one of those. At the bottom of these stairs, you see a mine cart. Before you, a vast tunnel with the corridors in front of you. Uh, you know this would eventually get you the main mine. There's a great deal of distance between you and it. It is also pitch black all the way through. Your flashlight moves across the floor and you see the track and this mine cart. And it's not one of those mine carts where you... <laughs> no, yeah, the hand carts. <laughs> uh, I, wanna, I wanna get to work on the mine cart so we can take it and zoom. I, I don't know how to... Uh... I think that's a great goal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Meanwhile, in the mines. So, so all of that was happening while your little endeavor was going on, the repelling, the rescuing, all of this is simultaneous since the ship was whooshed. But I think we're kind of caught up chronologically now, if that helps. So you're here. Let's say for our purposes, you've still got a, night, a tidy five minutes of you deciding what to do as you have your, you just finished your conversation with, with command. Okay. And for a moment, India's alone in this pseudo dark, the glistening. All by myself. It's time. It's time for my redemption arc. 
<laughs> I will be the hero that Dr. Khan wanted me to be. India. <gasps> Hello? You hear over the comms. Hello? What? Who is this? Do you like oldies? Like, I mean, like, oldies. Elmo? You can be my hero, baby. <laughs> oh my God. I'm not super convinced you could take away my pain. Elmo. And I will lie in this mind forever. Okay, okay. thank. Ooh. Okay, D thank you for that. No, no. I never had a chance to tell you this, but since. Wait, okay. I'm on the way out. Hey, hey. I just need you to know that. On the way I out. I think you're so pretty. And. Thank you. I, yeah, I know. it would just be a shame if I yeah. died. In this hero's death I'm experiencing presently. Yeah. And I okay, just didn't well, say anything. I'd feel so stupid. You've been well, here for okay, like well, eight months hey, and I hey. looked at you while eating my grilled cheeses in the commissary and I thought Hey I should make her a latte. Hey, Elmo, we're we're actually standing in front of substation two. Because so. I like you a latte. Great. No. Yes, everyone oh, does. Gosh. Um that's not that complicated it's not i understand everyone loves me come save me um yeah i'm, I'm right in front of you know i've been dangling thing. this i'm gonna pass out from the blood loss thing for a while yeah yeah no but i just want to check and let you know that's my plan okay no, well don't do that i uh, love you no oh, wait oh, okay oh Ow. <laughs> that was a five minute conversation you come to just as like the like final threads of like and i will stand by you <laughs> what echo in the name of all that is unholy was that. What was that? You just woke up from the ground. Why did you pass out? Are you okay? How long was I out? Seven minutes. That doesn't sound like me. No. What, do, what happened in the last seven minutes? I don't know. Exactly. I looked at Dr. Khan and it all just went white after that. Okay. Well, welcome back to the land of the living. Nice. Um, Dr. Khan has passed out. Eddie is saying that he's going to pass out and we're standing in front of a fissure. <laughs> I already passed out. So I think that we need to go get him right now. There are already people are coming for Dr. Khan, which is great, I great. suppose. Let's get this, bar we've got some kind of thing here and we've got like a, a barrow of sorts that we can like the fissure how do you cross the fissure oh like no you could step over it. it's wide oh, okay. but like it's just like down just deep like, okay that way okay great and so it's kind of hard to say right now and you're standing in pitch black mines uh as well the diamond thing isn't illuminating anything her flare is starting to sputter out as it goes so this is all lit up right here everything down here is dark you would just know this too everyone has to do the same osha type mm -hmm. training like hosla the yeah. hollow stars yeah. labor association uh which controls all of the safety protocol for the union uh ensures that you make sure you know these things one of those is if you're working in a mine, you need to know the mine layout, safety drills, and that kind of thing. So you would know if he's in substation two, that's also like where like the backup generators and stuff for the whole mine would be, is down there. So it's dark now, it doesn't have to be. Uh, there is a big crack that goes straight down there. I don't know if you want to do spelunking or if you want to find another way to get to substation two, so. Yeah, I'm not spelunking. I'm not spelunking. Either. Okay, no There's spelunking. There's no safety and yeah. Bruce almost got us I don't, killed this is a This is new. Can you roll a d10 for me? Ten? Elmo has ten minutes. I was giving them like, both emails. What do I have ten minutes for? I'm like, then your head explodes. The alien in my brain is gonna come out. Brain aliens. The that's next season. You have the sense that Elmo doesn't have long. Okay. Um, and to get down there. Yeah. There's there's straight down, which seems faster and dangerous, and then there's like the longer way, which either way we're doing some kind of like check or something. But it would be like. And how long would the long way take normally? It's like a nice fifteen minute walk. Fifteen minute walk. And do you have any vehicles or anything we motorized around us that we can use to get around faster? Uh, yeah. Great. And it's right It's right over the- You're fish. standing in front of the vehicle. It's Great. just dark. Like, next to you, just yawning wide open. There's, there's exosuits, there's mine trucks, there's drills and cranes, all just shadowy and dark in here. Uh, it looks like there's been like some evidence of like electrical fires and stuff like that, but generally speaking, it's just a dark garage full of bust up, but potentially usable machinery. And is there a med pack in the med vehicle bay? The med pack that uh, Dr. Khan used is flopped open and has a, you know, she just stole this dim pack out of it, but it's got- Okay, it's still got some other stuff. So, so we can save Elmo with. You can certainly field dress something going on with Elmo. With okay. It. Yeah. But there's no more stim packs because she used. Yeah. So then he won't. We can't. So we can't lady, bring him man. back, but we can 
bad. It's probably great that she used that stim pack. She was not. No, doing she needed. Okay. She needed yeah. that stim pack for sure. Yeah, yeah, she needed it. No, um, her arm was backwards, as was her leg. Um, so, yeah, I think we should drive down. Let's go into the vehicle bay. Like, let's. Do you know how to drive? I don't know how to drive. I do know how to drive. Of course, my my dad used to take me out to this course. It was really. This is another time. Sorry. Um. Right. So we need to. I can drive. I will drive us down. We. Can I take, can we put a light in the back of one of the cars? Yeah. Yeah, I want to take a light with us yeah. in the back of the car. To keep the gnats to away. To keep the gnats away because I really am not trying to deal with Smart. that gnats Genius. right now. Yeah, as you say um, this, you both look up and just, no. <laughs> the like shadows see, clear see, away. See, see, like, see, see, that's why. That's they're why. very that's curious. Why. Yeah. Is there any light by Dr. Khan? Yeah, yeah, Dr. Khan is sitting and you you took the yeah, time yeah, yeah. to really just light up yeah. the entrance cavern. Yes. Yeah. Yes, Um, because I don't play about those creatures. Yeah. I don't play about that. So yeah, don't we'll grab a big light. <laughs> you do get the vibe that like, in small numbers, these things are just curious. Yeah, which, yeah, so we, one light, well, at least we'll be able to like, get, and right. we have the vehicle so we can at least use that to shine. We'll prop it up in the car so that we can sort of use that and we'll have headlights for the vehicles. We also yeah. have our flashlights on our suits still working. So let's say you've made your way into the vehicle. Okay, yeah, yeah, we're yeah. there. You're 100%. walking and yeah, talking. Yeah, we're there, yeah. You have your business. And so, yeah. yeah, the, there's, right, like the most simplest thing would just be like a simple like, like golf cart, truck. yeah, like a golf cart <laughs> yeah, situation. Yeah, 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 it's got a little like sled in the back that you can put stuff on. Yeah, so yeah, so uh, yeah, just to hot wire it real quick. And then can we also take the fuel cell, like the fuel cell that we you stacked fuel the, when we talked last time. You put it like and I gave yeah. I, I had, had him one. I had him give take one. Yeah, on his back. So he that yeah, we'll, we'll we're just take that. it off, put it in the back of the car. No check necessary. Yeah, you just right. um, <laughs> put everything. So we it lights, lights up. It's a dark mine. It's headlights. You've got the extra like lights. Med pack. And um, forgot about the fuel, so fuel yeah. yeah. Um, because this is my redemption arc. I'm gonna be a hero. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, we're You're going driving. down. I'm just... El Elmo, El Elmo, hello, Elmo, Elmo, sir, El Elmo. I don't think sir is really needed. Sweetie, for honey cakes, baby boo. Is all you hear oh, over shoot. there? Shoot, I don't know. I thought that would work. I, I don't know. He told me he loved me. I was out for seven minutes, and that's what happened. Ask your friend. He told me <laughs> he loved me, so yeah. I don't know what to tell you. Like, I maybe... heard you call him Honey Boo. I was trying to revive the man. Eerily similar situations are happening, though the two of you, the four of you, could never know it, uh, as both of like both sets of of, of 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 youths, space youths, the worst kind of youths, go whizzing through the dark on their the miscellaneous vehicles. You, this thing comes to life, and you start at the vehicle bay and then dip down. As there's sort of this flip in your stomachs, it's a steep angle as you head down into the mines. The thick tires gripping the soil as the treads down into the mines and. You turn sending up purple dust into the darkness uh, and running over as you squash some rock gnats along the way. Their purplish blood just go to blurping and blurping. And within minutes, you are at substation two. Uh, the door is hanging open. There's a like lit flare on the inside, emergency flare. And you can see like some legs just hanging out past with some big chunky converses uh, of Eddie on the ground there. <laughs> and your argument is happening during this yeah, as worry, it yeah. happens. Um, but it's neat, just in parallel that the is happening as you two just are <laughs> whipping past columns. We'll come to you in a second. Elmo is in danger. We get in. Yeah. Yeah, we get it. Yeah, let's. So you just head into the substation. Just, yeah, I, I don't know how to fix this man exactly, but I know that stopping blood is a good thing. Yep. So we're just gonna stop that what blood. What do we see when he's there? Yeah. Like in front of you, you're looking at the the power set substation for the mine. This is where like what was piped in from the solar fields would happen. You also see like the backup jennies and stuff, but it looks like there's been some mechanical damage from the EMP blast in there that like, it's everything's just sort of fried a little bit. Yeah. Like uh, there's that, there's a desk with a half eaten sandwich yeah. on it in there. There's an Android laying like face down on the desk uh, next to him. Elmo is slumped against the lockers and whole leg is just matching Jackson Elmo leg injuries. Aww. Oh, this is a father-son bonding moment because this show's about family. And nothing else. He's managed to drag himself in here. Yeah. And yeah, he's wrapped like a, uh, um, like a jumpsuit a around yeah, it. Yeah, 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 as, yeah, as hard as again, and he's passed out yeah. there, so. So no stim packs. What else can we find in this med kit? And they're making uh, like bandages, gauze, uh, yeah. suture, gauze, yeah. antiseptic, all the like normal. Let's clean, at least clean, clean the, the wound, wound yeah. for sure. So I'll do that. Do you want to look at the 
generators to see like if there's anything you can get going absolutely so is there an option for like i can how long will it take me to kind of because i've got mechanical repair and intellect and I've got you're pretty super good smart score, so, so like, you have I'm good just, odds I, i'd just, like to try on the lickety yeah, yeah like, go ahead and make an intellect check for this and you same thing intellect check just for field dressing uh poor elmo intellect check for elmo okay right i'm not questioning it 31 Awesome. So okay, I'm a little upset at how not fatal this accident has been so far. <laughs> um, so the, you managed to stabilize him for the moment. Um, and you also know that rescue's coming for at least Amina. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've got people coming. Easy work. Yeah. There's enough duct tape and, and WD-40 down here to just really make it work. So yeah, you kind of go back to your roots for a second here. Yeah. Of just started with engineering, have to figure it out. Because this is my what? Redemption arc. Just nothing from you, huh? Yeah. I'm not buying Why it. would you say that? Yeah. I'm not. It's just like you're, you're kind of like picking up on some of Barry's habits, speaking it out into like... The green glow of this flare that, that he's lit down, this emergency flare, just kind of pleasantly lights the walls as for a second. Doesn't feel like home, but you don't feel alone because you're together, and that's really nice. Down there as this works out. Just columns of, of mind, very machine precision rock, rough around the edges, just whiz past in the, the darkness. And you can only see about like 20 feet ahead at any time, even with the powerful lights on this mine card that you managed to get going. And this time it's just doom, 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 doom. Um, you see me, uh, see me shoot that thing? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I it's sure. Pretty hurt right now. How could I miss it? <laughs> it's yeah. probably, it's probably dying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Most probably... things die when, they, when I shoot them. <laughs> they so do. Yeah, but I was, uh, you know, yeah, pretty, pretty cool. Now it was, it was super, super cool. Um, <laughs> if I start singing a song um, with Jerry, will that lose us, to, like, as tunes? The rhythm of the tracks seeps into your heart like sweet nectar, and the song blossoms in your chest. Sweet dreams are made of the do-do. Who am I to do to disagree? I kind of, kind of like this song. We can only do 15 seconds for copyright reasons. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know the words, so it can be fine if I sing the song. Go, Jerry. You know, actually, I, that song's pretty rad. <laughs> if I can say, I, I don't want to, like, you know, <laughs> comment too dark. much. Thanks, Barry. Yeah. So. This is just something I came up with just now. <laughs> It's not that bad. Huh. Go ahead and make a composure save. Okay. This is for, we're gonna call this like a mini rest save since they don't have an option of taking shore leave at any time soon. Okay. Let's go ahead and try it out. Jerry's gonna add five to my composure as yeah. my emotional support. Chameleon. Wow, yes, okay, great, uh, success. That is exciting. So roll a d10, please. Okay. We're gonna divide that in half. I mean, from where I'm sitting, that's an eight. That's an eight, yeah. You wanna do the full four? I think that's great. So you uh, will, both of you, um, yeah, this is a pleasant moment on probably the least pleasant day in a long time for uh, both of you. It's just strange for Barry because people don't act like this in front of him. They're standoffish because of my personality, so for some reason this... And the healed head wound, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah but like this, just seeing this type of just, I don't see many people that are themselves and it's just comforting to Barry. You think this to yourself, and I'm gonna have some fun with that in two shakes of a Persian kitten's whiskers, as both of you are relieved of four stress and something about it this moment, this day, whether it was the half a beer, getting past this rock worm, <laughs> half a beer. the like beers, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> following the rules of, of a, a little mini shore leave save here, both of you get two points to put into whatever save you would like. So you can crank them up by a little bit. What was the phrase that you just haven't felt like yourself in a while? Is that what? Yeah, haven't been like, yeah, I've never felt like myself. Oh, teardrop. <laughs> Wasn't like somebody hasn't made you feel this way in a while? Yes. No, I've never, no one's ever been this just happy around me. Impossibly, against all the odds, like the future looks bright. Similar to Eddie earlier in the episode, suddenly you were transported to about a year ago as 
you wake up in a hospital bed and you can only see out of your left eye as uh fuck where where are you either hey look hey there sweetheart are you black shield are you part of black shield black shield oh honey no hey hey, yeah i'm just gonna ask you not to and a gentle pair of extremely strong hands grabs your forearm you notice that one is gloved in just this perfectly flawless skin and the other one is completely mechanical as these arms with great strength these hands pull your your arms down and and you find yourself just contained and then she goes whoa 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 and she, a syringe is administered to your system as something hits and you relax not knocking you out but just calming you down when she goes that's it tiger hey hold on hold on and you feel your heart rate slow you are in agony uh you've never felt this kind of pain before and looking quite concerned almost paternally concerned in the in the the doorway of this medical bay is chance uh and he's like yeah i just picked him right out on the rim of the aoc (sighs) you made this quick work doc what do you think is it is it gonna last and ub40 pulls down her mask to reveal her sort of signature semi-skeleton looking thing dazzling eyes as she goes well I did what I could. Um, sweetie, can you just just give me the lightest nod if you can hear me? Just the brain surgery is different in the future, so you can nod right after it. But yeah, okay, okay. Hey, take it easy. I have got some great news and I've got some not so great news. Yeah, yeah. Shh, shh, shh. You're safe and you're with friends and that's all that matters. So two things. One, we were able to get you pretty much up and running. I don't know if you know this. You got shot in the head. What? Yeah. With a don't let's let's try not to just just rest easy there a little bit. Um, I don't know what you were doing out there, but it probably wasn't the best, was it? <laughs> we all like a little mischief around here, especially in the Bissalora cluster. But uh, I wouldn't recommend doing that for a very long time. More importantly, you kind of pulled through. You're a fighter, kid, and I and I really like that about you. So I'm just impressed that you're here with us now, and we're all super thankful. Downside, I was not able to get all of the pieces of the the bullet out this tungsten carbide composite it does this nasty thing where it sort of just shrapnels out and you got real lucky that only the smallest piece went in there it's still in there and chance is uh like man it was nasty i just found him in this pod just bleeding out it's the most blood i've seen in a long time and i've seen a lot of blood and she's like not really the time chance and he's like right 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 uh she goes so great news is you're gonna live bad news is I don't know how long, but hey, that kind of makes us alike, doesn't it? You know, we're all on timers, and now you and I just have a stronger idea of when that's going to be. But your ticket isn't punched yet, and you're going to be on the mend in just a little bit. Welcome to Lover's Rock, baby boy. And yeah, you take in the pretty clean, well-maintained medical bay around you. As, as you look at that, you, you can speak in things. It just hurts a lot as you take in this information. So... What, what, what do you, what, what's gonna happen to me? You know, in another way of looking at it, you've died already. And somehow, I find that relatable. I think in a little way we all die a little bit each day. You just did it all at once, right up front. It's not a matter of if, but when, as far as that bullet getting your goat. Of course, unless like you're squished by a rock or some sort of horrible mining accident, which happens a lot around here understanding that those might occur uh yeah i would just make plans accordingly live life to the fullest until then could be a year could be a decade could be several decades we just we just can't dig that thing out with doing even more damage but i'd take it easy for now okay yeah Uh... hey look at it this way i know this isn't comforting at all it could be a lot worse you could be dead (laughs) i've got it from here and chance is like (laughs) All right. So I... Okay, just while he's gone, I think you're going to be bunking with that guy, so just, okay, he likes cardamom-scented things, and he's got a thing for candles, so as a thank you, I would just, on the next thing, if you can arrange it, get something like that. I'm not thinking about candles. This is really soon. I'm sorry, it's a lot. I'm really not thinking about candles. (laughs) Stupid me, android, human. Right, right, right. We'll get there. Beep boop. (laughs) (laughs) But I... I... Cheated death. Fucking A. That's pretty sick. 
It's rad as fuck. Am I? Him? She holds up a mirror in front of you, and you see the coolest mother truck and scar you've ever seen over one eye. And as far as facial injuries go, you can't do much better than just the single eye slit. You look great. <laughs> Bad ass. As a professional, I can't comment on your hotness ometer, but I would say just from the readouts here, it's like a seven or an eight. <laughs> so for everybody's reading as a colony seven, and then that's not, I just want to be diplomatic to the, you know, hotness is objective. What, what, what now am I? What now indeed? You got a little bit of time. What do you think you want to do with it? Internally, I can't go out back into space. Can, uh, can, can I stay here? And you're back and things are okay, ish. That specter of a thought never far from your mind because it's literally in your mind. But for right now, right this second, you feel like you've made the best of your time. This kid's all right. This ain't bad. Shucking and jiving over there in the corner. <laughs> you doing all right? You were quiet for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I was Ten just, minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I was just, you know, I had so many cool thoughts I was just thinking about. Nothing nothing big. Uh, uh, but yeah. Um, so what is this thing? Yeah. Uh, I should know where it leads to. Uh, <laughs> 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 And as you come out of your reverie and you're just finished boogieing, uh, just perched just on your clavicle, Jerry is having a great time. Just... <laughs> when you feel good, he feels good. It's a, like a reciprocal thing. So even though his job is to make you feel good, just to remember what science is going on inside that synthetic animal, uh, it's a pleasant moment and a deeply unpleasant time. Lovers in a dangerous space time. The cart slows as it reaches its terminus and you've come all the way from the other side of the solar fields and now have stopped right there. What you can see as the mine cart pulls to a stop, it looks identical to the other end in that there are just infinite tunnel in front and behind that hauls off into black uh, rock gnats, which aren't in small numbers, scurry out of, out of the lights as it, it, it eases to a stop and you're in pitch black, except for up the steep incline with deep treads where larger mining vehicles have come down and come back up in order to pull the ore up out of the thing. You can see uh, a light coming out of a hatch at the end of this tunnel here, at the top of this incline, and uh, you see uh, shadows in motion sort of thing. If you had to put your finger on it, it looks like you found the main mines. Okay. Uh, is this supply depot lit? Uh, you are looking at the, oh, we're up our here. team is here. Little mongoose looking ATV uh, is right there. And these two are hard at work in here. So we've got Elmo, Eddie, unconscious android person, and India are at work in here. You two are right here for the moment. And that you see them moving around in that. The supply depot, uh, you wouldn't have known you would have passed. It was like in pitch black. In okay, so we want to know that's there. Yeah. So, okay. Hello. How? how Yo. Hey. Hey, guys. With the press of a button, India, you've done it. The generator lights up and the mine flickers back to life. These oh. dim industrial lights everywhere. It's not great, but it is certainly an improvement God. on pitch black and okay. ominous here. Okay. The deep scarlet and violet walls uh, reflecting uh, the, the dim industrial lights. Uh, you take a step back to look at your handiwork and that's when you notice two figures coming up the slope from below you. Eddie, do you see that? Oh. Oh. Hey. oh. Wow. Our resident button presser. Look at Come your work. On. You work. You're fixing this. This is your redemption arc. Okay. It's okay. Sorry. No, you're right. I'm, I'm redeemed. I'm sorry. 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 Wow. So, yeah, we Accepted. just. Accepted. Uh, we kind of like, you know, here to save you guys. Oh, because so you guys Me. brought the ship here? I... In the mine, no. But do you have we... a, a do you have a way out? Like a... Yeah, we have a, I a, brought... a ship. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a way to get to the a ship? Two -seater. <laughs> the two seater. The two seater. We can, we can leave in the ship. Yeah. If we want to. We can so bring so you, didn't you came to save us. So, but only you can leave you guys, in the ship. You guys are missing. I know you're, you're worried about the ship. Yeah. But I brought Barry. He brought Barry. I okay. brought Problem positivity. Solved. And we are our intentions, which are good. We brought those. Great. Intentions, so, Barry, and what was the third one? Um, My 
positive outlook. Positive outlook. And a gun! And and weapons. We brought weapons. Barry. Oh, we injured a worm. Hey, there's worms down here. Um, all right. Great that you guys are here. Yeah. Great that your ship is somewhere else. The two-seater. Super useful. Let's get Elmo and go back you up guys found with Elmo? Dr. Khan. Um, also, as part of my arc... <laughs> I'm in my redemption arc era, so just FYI, BT dubs. Just That's go with great. It. I think that we should also try to save the android. <laughs> yeah, of course. The one we, there? Of course. That, well, that's yeah. a good idea. Yeah. One of my things, yes, panic rolls, was that I'm supposed to attack my enemy every time I see them. Attack enemy or anybody you don't recognize or know upon sight, yeah. It was, yeah. Do you have to roll before you attack? It was one or the other, no. Great recall. The I'm No, it's sorry. both. That's why I've been a bitch to her, is because she She's is my own. enemy. She doesn't know that, but. Uh, she is standing really close to the lip of that chasm. You. You. <laughs> no, you! What? Oh my God. She has some crazy eyes, you should run. I'm walking towards her. I'm now standing over her, yeah. very tall, very menacing. Well, I would have been backing away while exactly. you would have been walking. Would... I'm getting behind Barry. Can I put my like place hand on gun now? Are you just watching this going? I'm just watching, but I'm like, that's crazy. Yeah, the laser focus, What uh, what is it you'd like to do? I want to push her down by her shoulders. Whoa, whoa, like, whoa. Just, not In down, like just down. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh. combat oh. roll. Yeah. I was like into the chasm. No. Combat check. <laughs> If you both succeed, it's whoever's closer to their number. Oh shit. Oh, hey, but you've got a 15. What? What is your combat? Oh. My, com my combat is 39. And what'd you roll? 29. 29, so you're 10 off. Fuck. What's wrong? Uh, I rolled an, a 19. And what's your combat, combat is 15, so you're closer. No, my combat is 34. I don't really. Hey, you're looking oh, yeah. at body. Yeah, I was looking at the body safe. Roll a D10, how yep. hard you push her. Wait, 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 wait where are you, what, what are you doing? Five. Five, yeah. You and your wrecked little suit get shoved hard and you hit a rock as you go back. You take five points of damage. I just uh, go like completely airborne and my legs and arms are outstretched and I go, and I hit the back of the wall. You are watching this happen. Your hand goes to your gun. Uh, uh, what happened to the redemption arc? Uh, I have been wanting to do that since she pressed that Gracie, button, and I okay? haven't had a chance to because we have been fighting for our lives for the last 24 hours. Uh, it hasn't been 24 hours. It's been however like long it's been, we have been fighting for our lives. I have had to do so. I have saved so many people because of her. About four hours or so. You saved two people. What? I saved three. Hey. You hey. be 40. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? I just got pushed into a wall. Yeah, you just got pushed into a wall. It's clear what's wrong with her as blood just sort of like runs out of one of her ears, that thick, creamy, white android fluid. Now, like we were doing before, I was we were rudely interrupted. I would like to get our friend Elmo and back towards where Dr. Khan is so that at least when people come, they can see and get them upstairs. I'm sorry, absolutely not. Are you just gonna push us after we I risk our lives? You, well, you pushed her. Yeah. And she's in like, we we went out of our way uh. to save you ungrateful people. And now what, this is the hostility that we're met with? You didn't bring anything to I save us. I didn't even want to save you. Okay, well then thank you so much for not wanting to save us. We're gonna go and save ourselves. Go ahead, okay do that, you. it's fine. Yeah. I go check on Grace now. I also check on Grace. Uh, I don't know what's wrong with me. Grace crying. Um, yes. question for you. Cybernetics is the only way to fix androids. Human rules for like, external stuff on an android. Would we have anything left over from? Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, like you could, like first aid kits. So stim packs is an, oh no, right this second. First aid is, okay, we got 10 minutes. I'm just gonna bandage this and just keep it that. So there's a solution to just okay. keep her from. All right. Don't have to roll. No thing. rolls. Okay. This is just a using yeah. the first aid kit. Now, the, now maybe there's like a fear or a composure in reaction to this, but I leave that up to you. I'm not going to call for it unless you feel like it's something your character would actually like be troubled by. Um, otherwise, I, mean, I know she's crazy. Yeah, and I it's unnerving that redemption because we're back to regular India now, right? Yeah. So I'm like nothing happened. Not important. Yeah. Ooh, what are you? Which one did you roll? I love that composure, but I made it. Doesn't seem like this is a standoff right this second, but. That wasn't okay. That wasn't okay even a little bit. No. Yeah. And you're the one with brain damage. Jeez Louise. So 
I think my G's Louise count is up to three. Is that? I have not been taking notes on your G's Louise count. All right, just add it to the, we'll put it at the bottom of the screen. G's Louise, I think. I think I also said G's Louise once. All right, make it four. Okay, good. Just put it in the comments. We'll, yeah, whoever gets the correct tally wins. um, A gold star that uh, will come in the mail. India's wig. So. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and the gold star. Yours was better. <laughs> we should keep the wig for no, costume purposes. No, let's give the wig out. I think it's a lovely award. I love um, this. Yeah. Okay, real thing here. By the end of the season, whoever has the accurate G's Louise count gets the wig. That's just what's going on. Ah! Okay, back in the situation. Uh, you are tending to Gracie. Gracie, you are dumbfounded, and you are you pass your composure check, so uh, everything seems... What... In the middle of all this, cool as a cucumber once again, are you up to, that was an, we'll talk about the decompression session. What a wonderful, wonderful use of a condition. I'm just really proud of you right now. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. You're lucky I didn't kill you. Now, let's get Elmo upstairs. Unless, did you guys bring another vehicle to move around or no? What you're not gonna do is tell me what to do. Okay, so then stay here and do whatever it is you need to do. I'm gonna go. Barry, just, Come up with us. There's like a whole team coming or something to get us out of here. Can you help? Can you be useful and put Elmo in the back of the truck? I am tending to the person who just like knocked into a wall. She's fine. Can you be useful and get Elmo back in the truck? As they bicker, you have the opportunity to notice if you so choose. Uh, Do you want to notice something or are you locked in on this? I want to notice. Yeah. You, having slumped over, uh, you're at the edge of that fissure that has gone even deeper into the the rock from from where you are. It's just here with like the the generators on and the light sparkling past this. It's not quite the hypnotic effect that that you had experienced earlier. Something was going on then that doesn't seem to be happening now, but you, See that this goes really, really deep and you can just barely make out something you can't quite comprehend down at, what is that? Deeper, deeper, that's what you notice. It's not moving, whatever it is that you're seeing, but there's something way down there that with your, hey, androids have some advantages and one of those is perfect eyesight. So the, you clock something way down in the fissure, yeah. No, I don't mean like it's binocular vision. Yeah. It's oh, inside. yeah. You just say <laughs> as you look <laughs> yeah. with normal eyes. <laughs> Amazing. That's just something you're it's noticing as they bicker in the background. It, it, you've covered most of yeah. of this mission. Like the Doctor Khan had asked for uh, yeah. the yeah, sort I, of I, data like, set. But we need to kind of get. I want to get him up where Doctor Khan is. Yeah. Okay. I don't even think that's a check. You just do that. Yeah. 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 The, okay. Yeah. So we drive. grab. So the four there. of you all. Yeah. And, and, the and card. Um, Elmo is laying on the back seat with... Right. Did you want to grab the, the android? Are you leaving them there for the moment? Oh, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, he's strapped to the roof. Oh, okay, yeah. As you as you flop that over... Yeah. Who strapped this person to the roof? Yeah, we're strapping him to the roof. The android that, that's flopped over on there... Yeah, uh, he's like, not awake. At a... At a even even just flopping it over, they're extremely handsome. They look kind of like Drake. <laughs> <laughs> Phil? <It's> Phil! <laughs> God. You know him? Yeah, I know Phil. Devils. Uh, yeah, you can see the, the, the Helldivers logo mm-hmm. on, on his jumpsuit matches, the one on, on this guy's. I'm just, yeah. Nice. Okay. The, and, and he has fallen, like there's a sandwich all over his face where he had sitting to just kind of take a little Android lunch break there. Um, because they can. Yeah, strapped to the roof. We're moving. So the okay. the four of them, meaning uh, you Eddie. too. Uh, all, yeah, all four. Do, do of you us. do you all want to pilot? Are you still going with the gang here? So they've set a course of action to like. Oh, like, I wasn't giving her a choice. I just propped her over my shoulder. Awesome. Okay, so and you got in the the rig as well. Yeah, but not because you told me to. Oh, okay. Incredible. No rules, no checks. This is explored. You've done it. You've you've accomplished quite a bit. You 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 come up into the the mouth of the cavern just as Darius and uh, let's say uh, that in quite a bit of time has passed. So Ravi would also be up by now, and he's back down there. Um, and yeah, Ravi has a kind of a far off expression in his eyes as he follows behind Darius, which is just something you clock even at uh, like the hundred yards uh, through this like massive space here. But as you arrive in the well lit space, uh, Dr. Khan seems stable on the ground and Darius's relief even through his suit is immediate as he just dashes that moon gravity just straight over and he just scoops her up perfectly propping her head in his mammoth arms he's just whispering something uh, to himself and and her as he picks her up as Ravi uh, comes in and is like could be worse I guess um 
Good job, everybody. The, that's that. Uh, well, let's um, get her on the the old thing, and we'll, we'll get ourselves out of here. It looks like they repelled you. They still got their, like, yeah. their harnesses on there. Uh, the In short order, the business is apparent. Like, you've, you've had the foresight to gather enough fuel to use those pods, so you could probably just fump one person after the other if they'll get her stabilized. So that's the plan. Is there any other thing you want to do down here in the mine before we move on in our story? Um, can I go look for the paperwork? Uh, it's, it's it's a computer terminal you're looking for. The computer yeah. terminal, yeah. yeah. The, whatever the data set would be from that sensor output. Yeah, there's one deeper down in the mine. Um, it would be in the secondary tunnels um, down below, just from knowledge you would have. Yeah. Um, um, are you sure you want to do that with no, all no. of these gnats going on? No, and no. or you could try and salvage like any sort of data readout out of Heartbreaker Station, but like, like one is sort of scary situation. The other one is high possibility that it's just f foobar. Hard to say. So salvage mission or or exploration mission, I guess, is what's on the table for you here. I would like to ask Ravi to stay behind and look for the readings. Absolutely, he yeah. says. Uh, I'm very interested to see them myself. Yes, great. So if you could look There's for them. There's been a number of side effects of, yeah. of, of this, this sensor that, I mean, whole What kind smokes. of side effects? Have you seen Heartbreaker Station? I wouldn't call it. It's not a side effect. I mean, it is a direct uh, effect. It's, it's like a little broken. Uh, just, <laughs> but. Uh, but Dr. Khan was like, hey. I heard her on the, and going down in here, this is, uh, the as he he's kind of like wa yeah. doing a, a, an inspection. So walking and talking, Darius has, he is still in no mood. Like doesn't even look at you, has done his own thing and collects his sister and he's out of the mind. Like, like he's just, off. So we're in the entrance cavern right now. Yeah. So yeah. everyone's just right here, um, where you've like parked your yeah. So then I, your whip. Yeah. And and yeah, Ravi clocks the um, chasm. The, the the new rift that's open yeah. from the seismic activity, and Ravi. Intriguing. Intriguing. Okay. Gather some data. Yeah. What you can, and please radio us every three to five minutes with any information, any new information. Mm -hmm. If no new information, say no new information. Got it? Do you got it? I understand this so clearly since it's my job and it's what I've been doing for about 15 years and the astonishment you're seeing on my face is not because I happen to be a machine but because I don't understand why you're talking to me like this. I appreciate the work you've done but I would love it if you went away. Um, we'll check in up top, and Redemption I don't want to discredit this. Arc. Well done. Glad you found the doctor. Um, let's never do this again. Thank you very much. He gives you a look that could cut cobalt and goes back to what uh, he's doing. He pulls out his own like data pad and starts serving it, and you see him turn on his light and just start making his way on down into the mines by himself. He seems undeterred by any of this. Nicely this done, Ravi. <laughs> As he just goes on. Um, well, we came down here to, to see if there was anybody else to save. Uh, before Robbie leaves, can I ask him if, can I ask him something or is he gone already? Speaking of headaches. Hey. Uh, um, yeah, thanks for that, by the way. I, I have a whole lot to say on this matter, but okay. I assure you before I do, Captain does. So good luck on that. <laughs> wow, man, I don't want to be you. You are in so much trouble. Sorry, what is it you wanted to say? You knocked me out. Sorry, what is it you wanted to say? I knocked you, I knocked you out. You knocked everybody. You knocked like, everyone out. Yeah, remember uh, when you did I'm, that? I'm, I'm really sorry. I didn't, I didn't intend for that to happen. And I, I, he I He gets just, down and he takes both of your hand, both of his hands onto your sweet little helmet. And he goes, thank you. It's, it's discreet. Like it's weird. It, 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 to anyone else looking, it looks like threatening. The look in his eyes is the closest thing you've seen to love in any android on this colony. You're... Make a fear save. You're welcome. It's weird. <laughs> Fine. That's a critical fail, so let's see how you do. I think that's 89. Fine. <laughs> Get out. You die. <laughs> in bliss, you wait. So you rolled an eighty-nine and a one. <laughs> that is what it seems to be. This seems like a genuine moment to you, just as like 
uh, what before was starting to like kind of conflict with your, your identity of yourself and like your purpose and just sort of hurt. All of it's hurts. It's so stressful. But yeah, he's not messing with you. He's not angry. He should be angry. It's just kind of remarkable as, uh, yeah, it's just reassuring. He releases your helmet um, and says, we'll talk about this later and starts heading off down into the mine. What did he say to you? Yeah, what was that about? You can't ask questions. You knocked her out. I can do whatever I want to do. Hey. What was that about? Stay away from me. Nice. Tell her. I'll do what I want. I don't want to talk to you anymore. Oh, great. Lucky me. Barry, there might be You're still talking be... to Ravi. I was... Sorry. Um, what were you going to say? No, what? that was... That was like a... Um... I, no, are you okay? That, that... After... What happened in the mines between you two? Nothing. Nothing happened in the mines. We sang. We Dude. had a big battle with the worms. I killed remember? a worm. That's what I did. And we flew, flew the I'm ship. I'm sure he's dead. Yeah. Wait, Barry. I'm sorry. Are you like friends with this girl or something? Like, are you guys like a thing or something? I don't really need to talk to you right now. <laughs> Bodied. Bodied queen Can you of be useful in some other way? Don't you have something to yeah. hack or do or something? Well, I mean, what was, uh, that? What was that? What gallery guys... in the corner what, over here. What were you talking about? He, he said that I, I knocked him out, and then he thanked me. Like, he seemed... Yes? Go on. You're all on comms, so it's not like... Yeah, a... exactly. <laughs> We're like yeah. whispering in the comms. <laughs> That's so something that Crazy yeah, Barry would so, do. Everyone can hear you. <laughs> yeah, he he thanked me, like. So did I. As, you did, <laughs> you did. That was really nice, but I really felt like I screwed up, and he seemed like he was almost better off. Like he thanked me for pressing the button, Barry. Maybe something. I don't know. Maybe something good came of it. I mean, India told me that Dr. Khan told her we were going to be rich. We being the royal, we not me as in a worker here. But Rich? From from what? From... From the chasm? Yeah. Maybe it wasn't all destruction. We got to a couple of, let's say like an hour and a half later, everyone's had time to, to go do their things. You each took your rides and the escape pods up. Um, to get just the heck out of Dodge and out of that mine in Carol Thompson's office, uh, which is stark for a person who's been there for two decades running this mine. The captain takes up most of her side of the cubicle. Uh, just broad, powerful woman, thick braids, tattoos of her different like union uh, allegiances on, on her face. And she goes, this is a completely bad situation and it is total and wanton destruction. You have taken from me, you have taken from every colonist here, you have upset the company. What the hell were you thinking? I'm and what's worse? Okay. I imagine you're going to follow up with sort of a like a, an apology, something verbal that would just put a soothing balm on this situation. Is that was that the strategy? Don't answer that. Everything. Footnote here is rhetorical until I give you. Yeah. All right. Okay. So you can think about things rationally. That's good. What's worse, you nearly killed our geologist and my best friend, Doctor Khan. Let that sink in. You put the lives of three other children in danger by convincing them to come along with your scheme, and I can't help but wonder if uh, somebody here caused this. What made you want to do this? Were you angry? What? We took you in. Uh, we realized very quickly you were incapable of handling knives in the kitchen, and so I personally put in the work visa so you could go down to the mines because I know what a shit job it is to have to keep that warranty going. I, and I don't know, it's not clear because we never get to talk, know each of your names, care about each of you, and every single person on this colony is my responsibility. Do you know what you have done? 
My contract was up in a year. Look out the window, sweet pea. The chasm and the wreckage of Heartbreaker Station is just gone. So please, permission to speak granted, enlighten me. What were you thinking? I just, um, I guess I, I really need to be here and it's life or death for me and that sort of clouded my judgment. So I'm sorry. Um. I know there's no way that I can make things better, um, or I can s go back in time and not press the button, but um, if there's any way, I guess I, you don't want my my help because I'm I'm uh, I seem to be making things worse. So normally I would say that this is impersonal, but in this particular case, it kind of is a little bit. Um, Chance, you can come in now, and his strapping figure comes around uh, the corner as he gets out sort of some zip tie handcuffs sort of a situation some restraints and he's like let's just make this easy she's like you're a liability you've already cost us millions of credits i don't have a choice but we're just gonna have to turn you in that's just what's going on um plastics wilson hereby releases you from all liabilities responsibilities and your current warranty extension. Um, before you cuff her, could you please sign these documents here? She hands you a pen. As your hand trembling over the uh, document hovers, uh, Aisha pops her head and she goes uh, in the doorway. And this is a heavy moment. She's like, oh, sorry. Normally I, um, uh, you have to come see this. The, the captain is like, uh, Aisha, read the room right now. Chance says nothing. As uh, so It's like, uh, we're really in the middle of something. Aisha says, I know. Um, just two seconds, I promise. And uh, she says, don't touch anything. Walks out of the room. Uh, and you're left to sit with Chance, who just watches you twirling his own little security lanyard around. Tough break, kid. In the command center, they've gotten the computers back online. Nearby, Jackson uh, with his leg in, in a splint that's been reinforced with future stuff is lying underneath a column of conduit that's leading off to security. And uh, you can see that he's working on getting Valentine back online. It's very clear that that's what he's doing. And everyone else is huddled around a computer in the corner, sipping tea and not really doing anything is Dr. Kapoor, who just looks out the window distracted. Um, she, Aisha takes uh, the captain over to the array of computers where uh, it's been about an hour. Like everyone's had time to like, shower and shave the the backup power situation is something the adults seem to be attempting to begin to handle so we're not super worried about that right now um they've started taking steps to getting out to the solar fields so no one seems overwhelmingly concerned about getting life support up and going um all of this is happening while you're just waiting in in the office with chance the is anybody here is my main question or have you retired to different areas of the colony uh i probably with elmo and Buster, it, I would be in my quarters. Okay, so you just yeah. Went, went but I'm I'm shower. I'm thinking. Okay. Yeah. Like so you're not in command right now. No, no, no. no. How about you? Yeah, I'm also uh, in my corner in in my corridor, just uh, thinking about, and kind of like you know, usually in situations like this, I got out, and I'd be feeling great. But right now, I just last thing I saw was just Grace walk in with um. And I just didn't... First real friend you made. First real friend. Yeah. 
that's a bummer. So none of you are in command right now. So really the only perspective we have of this from our heroes is from you just kind of leaning around the door. This is not a big command center. So you can see and hear this hubbub and it even has Chance's attention as both of you just kind of like look, he moves the blinds down and looks through. And uh, Amina who uh, has just like, <laughs> she's wearing this weird like Ziploc suit that's just filled with bio gel on one side of the thing. It's the good stuff that you be busted out for her. Uh, it's like, oh, it was just work. Bring it back, bring it back. The, uh, Jackson, please, the, whatever you did, it's not, come on. And Jackson's like, oh, hold on one second. Maybe turns something in the wire content and the conduit and the information comes back up. And she goes, Captain, look at this. And the captain goes, what, what am I even looking at? Uh, and she brings up the, the readouts on the, uh, situation for an updated uh, map of the mine and she goes, uh, yes, we'll have to replace Heartbreaker Station with a whole new uh, construct and yes, that's probably hundreds of millions of credits, but Captain, uh, it worked. Something happened. There's, look at the, the palladium, the, the gallium, the cobalt alone and what, all of that would be fantastic on its own. There's a mother load. Captain, what is this? And on the survey readout from the mining sensor that where the button has been pressed, deep below everything else in Lover's Rock, far below Heartbreaker Station, far below where the normal tunnels of uh, the mines would ever extend, is a perfectly spherical chamber. No one says anything for a moment. It's not possible, says Aisha first, and it's like, I know it's not possible. I, It doesn't... The captain says one minute and goes back into the office and she goes, this? We're gonna put it in the parking lot for a second. Okay. Okay. Th thank you. Sh shut up. Oh, yes, yes. Just shut up. And she goes back in and she goes, Chance, come here. And they all go and look at this. Uh, and everyone just takes this in. Aliens are not a thing. This is, in our universe, we have been so lonely for so long. There are creatures, but nothing that seems to be truly sentient in a way that's comparable to, to the human and now synthetic races that are happening here. There's just, it's been lonely and big and weird. There was that glimpse right when the great catastrophe happened on Earth hundreds of years ago that maybe something was out there, but this is the first glimpse in a long time of something truly special. Everybody glows with anticipation. And Amina goes, do you know what this means? And the captain says, holy moly. As everyone goes from being extremely upset to the most delighted they've been in a long time. They say, this can change everything. In the corner, Dr. Kapoor sets down her tea and goes and looks over it with a dramatic sense of interest. Outside, pitch black, the eclipse is in full swing. A whole month of night awaits. The colony has been revived for the moment. No one has died, and for that I blame each of you. <laughs> and the discovery, perhaps of the last 200 years, may have just been made due to some deeply misguided decisions from youths in space. Base. What did we find? What's in the mines? Is Elmo actually in love? What's going on with Eddie and UB40? Probably nothing. Everything and more we will talk about on the next episode of Unaccompanied Miners. Thank you for joining us here at the Panic Table. We will see you so soon. Um, oh yeah, just tiny waves. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Pew. Pew, pew. Eddie and UB40. Pew. There's nothing going on between Eddie and you. I was just like, all right, let's roll with it. <laughs> Is Eddie Elmo's best friend? Space. 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 Space.